There's a place I have found in the shade on the ground, far from all worries and troubling sound. When I go there to be by myself, only me. Someone waving at me I hope that it's you But who else could it be? I guess it would be nice To belong in your arms I hope you feel the same way too had a flat tire when we arrived which is not ideal but anyway the AA has come to the rescue look at our filthy trailer <laughs> that's our luggage trailer for all the stuff I also bought a ladder because Amazon <laughs> delivered it to the wrong place by accident but hopefully the AA will sort the tire out and we will be good for surfing Good morning and welcome to this week's vlog. We are down at Thornton Sands Beach. It's just stunning and it's not too windy, but hopefully you can hear me okay with the sound of the waves behind. The children are surfing. Actually, I'm just witnessing Coco doing some, oh, maybe that's gas. No, that's Coco. Um, anyway, I shall, I shall share with you some little clips of them surfing. Just wave at her show her that I was watching and paying attention. We have got um, Tess with us. Tess has come down to Devon. I left Penny and Florence at home because actually bringing all three was a little bit too much. Um, the forecast wasn't very good, has actually got better and we've just had all the carpets professionally cleaned, ready for the start of the season. I just didn't want a whole host of dogs. Um, making a mess but we thought that Tess actually would really benefit from having some time just with us so she is she is here bless her I think she's completely deaf Zai and I tried to call her earlier when we were standing beside her and she didn't even she didn't even flinch but we are having a bit of a stressful situation with the car so we've got a flat tyre the tyre itself is fine but there is a crack in the wheel and when we got down to the house last night the tire went flat and it had said that there was low low tire pressure um not not particularly low like nothing to be concerned of as we were driving but by the time we'd stopped and the car had sat for a moment it was as flat as a pancake so the aa came out i just think i've shared that somewhere in here with you 
and they told us actually the tire's fine but it's the wheel now it should be relatively straightforward however the wheel lo locking nut thing i'm not sure if it's exact technical term and i don't think that's right isn't in the car which is a mega problem because they are unique to the car and the AA guy does have a master set but not for Land Rover and so he advised that he didn't attempt to get it off because he could have made the problem even worse. We're just watching Gus. I don't know if you can see. That <laughs> was Gus doing some great surfing. So we basically we can't get the tyre, the wheel off and luckily my ever so efficient husband has a pump, an electric pump in the car so we can stop and pump the tyre up sort of every 15, 20 minutes, which is what we had to do this morning to get here. I have accosted um, all discovery owners in the car park, like a complete and utter nutter, to see if there's matches, but apparently it's like one in five, obviously because they don't want people to steal the tyres. So it's a bit of a problem. The nearest Land Rover dealership, and this is it's currently Sunday as well, which is another challenge, um, is about an hour and 20 minutes away from us. They do have a master set. We have spoken to them, but it's um, how easily we can get there. So um, I think we're going to wait until tomorrow because there is, um, there is somewhere in Barnstable that may have a master set and we won't know until tomorrow morning. So it's a little bit of a problem. The girls have just come over. We've got Neve, Coco's best friend, has come with us. She comes, always comes to Devon with us and Coco there. So I think they finished surfing. So I'm not going to chat to you anymore now. I'm going to go and get them warm because I think they're probably very, very cold. Get a hot chocolate inside them. And I will update you later on. that my husband had the pump but the situation is far from ideal I've actually been I'm gonna move away I've been accosted any discovery owners in the car park I'm gonna have to turn you around I've been going up and accosting people that have the same car as us bouncing on them I'm saying can we try your locking wheel nut please and actually everyone's been very obliging we found one that almost almost fitted but not quite which is hugely frustrating anyway i've got to go and pay i'll meet you over there i've got to go and pay for the parking we can't delay we literally fill it up with air and then action stations It's just says half time. Where are the oranges? Where are the oranges, Papa? Where oh, are man. they? He's just got quite aggressive. Actually, slightly physical and yanked me out of the goal so he could score. And never, never, never play football beside a river. Gus has actually just jumped in to save the ball. He's so brave. He's playing football in his onesie because he had a shower after surfing so he put his onesie on to be snugly and the ball went in here and he didn't even think about it he just leapt in and got the ball because I mean if he'd been a second longer I don't think we would have got it because it's flowing quite quickly so I think for the second half we need to put up a barricade along here slightly out of breath but really really good fun Si and I actually had our wedding reception on this bit of lawn here many years ago, 16 years ago. And um, yeah, very happy. And we've got the cows have been watching us thinking that we're completely and utterly bonkers. Let's go and see the cows quickly. They're farmer billies. I rent the land to the farmer. Here they are. <laughs> the ground is so wet, they can't go out at the moment. So they're in, they're in the barn. Anyway. Half time's almost up, so we better get back to it. They are crazy. 
they are going swimming in what they call the hot tub, which is quite a deep pool up there. So I was going up to supervise and actually I am making um, bolognese sauce. It's going to be bolognese with a twist because I don't have everything that I need here, but we will just improvise. left the kitchen cooking supper just to come and witness the fun that they're having. Gus we've decided is the new Lola. Archie lost his slider and Gus retrieved it. He's still in his one feet. Well done. That's quite fun to climb up. Do you need a hand? They are so brave. It is absolutely freezing in there. Oh, Anyhow I think I'm gonna have a lot of clothes and a lot of shoes to dry. But I'm now going to carry on cooking supper. But I thought to quickly share with you the wild garlic. So much wild garlic down here. And the smell as you walk up here is just amazing. So this is what wild garlic leaf looks like. And it's, it's obvious because they smell just well with garlic. The smell is amazing. The taste is amazing. I actually cooked a roast chicken last night and I used wild garlic. Um, in it, on it. I cook the potatoes in wild garlic. It's just amazing. So I will, um, I will try and film a wild garlic recipe while we're down here. Everybody has had another bath or a shower to warm up, having been in the river, and I have been sort of knocking up a very basic bolognese because. As I mentioned, I didn't have everything that I needed. So I thought I'd just talk you through what I did. I cooked an onion, fried that off, added two packets of mince, and then I've cheated and I use this. This is Marks and Spencer's tomato and basil sauce, rich and herby. And I added in some wild garlic too. And we had a roast chicken last night and I used the leftover chicken gravy as my stock. So that is bubbling away in there. I'm just bringing some water to the boil and we've got some garlic bread. So a really kind of easy throw together supper. But actually, if you don't have time to make like a proper bolognese, you can totally cheat and use something like that instead. So I just poured me quite a strong gin and tonic, but it's going down quite nicely. I've got a lot of wet shoes and the boys managed to lose a flip flop and a slider. Um, Gus's retrieval work. <laughs> he, he's not going to make it as a, as a retriever. He didn't manage to get those, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's a slider and a flip flop. But I've got um, three pairs of wet trainers, wet pair of wellies, and a lot of wet clothes. So the washing machine is going to be turned on fairly soon. I've got surfing stuff drying out there, and it's a little bit of a madhouse. Everybody's watching. What are you watching? David Attenborough. They're watching David Attenborough, which is, um, yes, always very educational. Anyhow, my pasta water has come to the boil. It's so lovely having an abundance of wild garlic literally just out there, which is perfect. The girls made cookies earlier too, which went down a treat for um, afternoon tea. So we get going to be enough spaghetti. I think I've got some more. Let's go get the spaghetti on and I will probably chat to you again tomorrow. So I'm out of all comfort zones. <laughs> looking like, possibly looking like a seal. Jamie has convinced me to come surfing today with everybody else. I mean it is in fairness beautiful weather. It is quite cold but um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're going to do this. Um, and I'll catch up with you later. Okay, I did surf. I did surf and it was awesome. Unbelievable, incredible waves. Um, 
I just had to, <laughs> I'd forgotten how to turn. I hadn't forgotten how to turn. I basically wasn't moving my hips. I was moving everything but my hips. And you have to move your hips to turn. So um, that was quite amusing. Anyway, I think I'm still, I might be still slightly blue. I've got so many layers on and I'm still freezing. But I'm feeling a bit excited because the tire, the wheel is fixed. We managed to find, well, I say we, that's the royal we. Simon managed to find a garage with a master Land Rover Discovery looking nut. So that is excellent. Lovely, lovely guy in Barnstable, Len. I think it's TP tires, something like that. He is a legend. So that is all done. We actually had apartments in um, Pulbra, which is near where we live, on standby. They were going to drive a locking wheel nut that would work down to us here in, here in Devon, which is um, very, very kind of them. But luckily we didn't need to go um, to that extreme. Hopefully you can. Archie's in having a second surf. Coco, Gussie and me are making it down. And I also had another bit of a nightmare this morning. My computer just froze. It would do nothing. It turned it on and off numerous times. And it just was not playing ball at all. And I had a Zoom at nine o'clock this morning and I couldn't get onto it. I couldn't do anything. Ended up having to use my phone. I bought my laptop with me and there's the most lovely guy here. He's, in fact, we've known him and his mother for years. Sort of an old friend of Simon's. He was here, he's a photographer. And I gave him my laptop and said, Nick, can you help? Is there anything you can do to make this work? So he tried a few things and said, no, you're gonna need to take it into a specialist, you know, Mac shop somewhere. Then I had another go in the restaurant where we've just had lunch waiting for Sai. And it's worked! It's working, it's working, it's working, which is so exciting. Managed to delete a whole load of videos, files, stuff off it that I don't really need. Um, and it's working, so hopefully we are fine because I've got a Zoom tomorrow with my members club. I just couldn't have another problem. Anyway, I'm going to stop prattling to you. Hopefully you've heard me all right with the wind. It's not too windy, so hopefully it's okay. Let's see if I can get um, to watch Arch catch a few waves. The surf is phenomenal. This morning was just unbelievable, but there's no footage of it because the sky was sorting the car out. It's been really stressful. Really stressful, but anyway, we got there. We got there, we got there, we did it. chatted to you on the beach after surfing. Um, oh, surfing is so exhilarating. So normally I am a really, really fair weather surfer, but I braved it yesterday and it was really, really good. The car is all sorted, which is such a huge relief. And Simon and I were talking about how amazing people are down here. They're just, I don't know, they're just kind, considerate, thoughtful, helpful, nothing's too much of an effort, which is really lovely. I think there's a sort of slower pace of life down in Devon and people have sort of got a bit more time and just really, really helpful and lovely. So such a relief that the tyre, the wheel is, is fixed. So we've got the spare wheel from the boot on at the moment and they're seeing if they can weld the one that um, was cracked and fix that. So we'll know about that in a couple of days, but um, just such a relief. It was beyond stressful. Anyway, we're having a wheel nut curried down, which will arrive today or tomorrow. 
So we've got that just in case that there's another problem. And apparently it's a real thing at the moment that there are cracked wheels because there are so many potholes in the road and, um, you know, people people are hitting them and it's, it's cracking the wheels, which, yeah, it's rather stressful. And my laptop is working, thank goodness. And I've just had a Zoom with my members club um, and a, a great friend who's a wine expert, which is really, really lovely. I wanted to do an early Zoom or early sort of in the month for my members club to talk about wine and food for Easter and, and all of that. So that was really good. And the Wi-Fi worked, Zoom worked, everything worked, which is really um, a huge relief to be perfectly honest, because I find it just too stressful. But today was effortless, which is a big, big, big relief. Everybody is out surfing and I'm actually going to whiz the vacuum clean around and do a few jobs. I've got um, the washing machine on at the moment and just, um, yeah, I'm gonna spend the next hour or so just pottering around here. Hello. I was so terrible at vlogging yesterday. I chatted to you about, um, I think I left you when I was going to do some hoovering, <laughs> vacuuming. And then I filmed a YouTube video for next week, um, one of my how-tos. And then I went to bed and read my book and it was blissful. The weather has changed. It's a bit damp, it's a little bit miserable, but actually it's very invigorating and wonderful being out here. The children, well, I've got three of them out there surfing. Sai and Gussie and Tess are walking down the beach now. <laughs> Might get wet feet. I've just had um, a photo, a photo session with Nico, the photographer who's standing there. Um, he's an old friend, we've known him for many years and I needed to, um, uh, um, I needed some pictures for a campaign. And I said, Nick, do you mind, do you mind, do you mind? And bless him, he kindly obliged. He's now taking pictures of the children surfing. But it's just so lovely being down here and actually really nice yesterday afternoon just to switch off for a little bit have a little bit of downtime I've massively got into my to my book um, it's called other women I think I shared that with you a couple of weeks ago but it's really really good so actually I went to bed early last night with my book I've got my book in the car but it's actually really lovely being out here the waves are awesome today kind of wishing that I was out there um, but anyway, I'm not. I'm here chatting to you all. shop in Linton to stock up on slippers. They have a wonderful selection. I've got a great cap that I bought in here and they've got these wonderful, wonderful bags. It's just full of all sorts of goodies in here. Lots of Aran jumpers and socks and body warmers, all sorts of things. So um, it's lovely to pop in. I also stocked up on my sheepskin liners. I wear them in all my boots. In fact, I've got them in my wellies now. And these are really sweet little key rings too. I've got my apron on because I've been clearing up the kitchen. We've just got back from a little shopping trip to Linton. I always love popping into Linton. I think I've said this so many times before, but I prefer to buy things in person than online. And although she doesn't have um, 
online anymore. She does do over the phone orders in the Linton Sheepskin shop. I'm sure that's the name. And these are my slippers that I, I've actually got a pair on my feet right now that I thought I could do with a new pair. I absolutely love them. They're rubber soled and I, the first thing I do when I get home is put these on. They only had one pair in my size. So I got these ones as well, which I thought would be great for the winter. And then I always stock up on these. They're $2.99 a pair. And I wear these, they're Landswell cushioned insoles. I wear them in my wellies, my ash trainers. Um, I've got them in a pair of sort of wintry heels uh, as well. I just love them. They are so great. And I think if your feet are warm, everything else is warm, like feet, hands, and um, head. <laughs> if those are warm, then it's fine. But hopefully we're, we're moving into warmer, warmer weather. Oh, it's been pretty filthy today. I've put the kettle on. I'm having a mug of chamomile tea just warming up. We're actually gonna go out for supper this evening. We went out for lunch as well, which wasn't expected. We went to, I think it's called the Croyd Cafe or Craf Cafe Croyd in Croyd Bay. And it's a tucked round. You have to go to the National Trust Baggy Point car park and then just walk up. Such good food. Absolutely delicious. So that was a real treat. Jamie, the um, he's one of the owners of Surf Saunton, recommended it and um, it was spot on. They had a great surf today. So Gussie didn't go in. He I think he took one look at the weather this morning and said, uh-uh, I'm not going in, um, which is quite wise. He gets really cold. He's a bit like me. He's, he's a fair weather um, surfer, but the others went in and they, um, they caught some great waves, which was really good. I actually used my Balance Me tanning drops last night. <laughs> I'm feeling like I've got a healthy glow, which is good because, um, I need it. I've been really tired and I think, you know, obviously we're on holiday and I just take my foot off the accelerator pedal. Here's Arch. Um, hi. <laughs> um, I take my foot off the accelerator pedal and just kind of slow down when we're on holiday and when we're, we're down here. I mean, obviously because I run this as holiday lets, there's quite a lot that I need to do when we're here, but it's just been quite nice just to have a little bit of time just to kind of unwind and catch up. Um, I think Sai's gonna come and chat to me in a minute, but um, I then need to do a little bit of washing and then we're heading to a pub, which actually somebody on Instagram recommended. Um, so we're gonna go and try that out. Ooh, I've just seen a very exciting sight. Three ducks in the garden. Um, it looks like two drakes and a hen have just, um, come waddling down the lawn, which is a really lovely sight. I'm going to see if I can quickly show you. Let's go out there, see, hopefully we won't disturb them. <laughs> Here they come, such a lovely sight. Such a lovely sight. So there's one, the other two actually have gone, I'll show you. Oh, oh no, there they all are. I thought they went up onto the other bank. Anyway, that's what just distracted me. I think it could be possibly mating season. Si and I were chatting earlier and um, I actually think it's something to celebrate. He um, has not drunk for 21 years this week and I think that's really, really remarkable. Um, how long was it, darling, that you hadn't drunk when we met? Um, I guess probably about four years or so. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, 21 years is, is pretty incredible. And I really, really admire you um, for, for doing what you've done and, and making a big, a big life change. Well, I, I think just, you know, just talking about myself and um, I think I'm going to go on a long <laughs> spiel here. But yeah, you know, I, I think there are, you know, certain. I think, you know, sort of drinking and partying and all the rest of it is is, you know, to to a degree a rite of passage. You know, for most young people, teenagers, you know, in twenties, thirties, whatever it may be. Um, and then there's a, 
time to sort of move on with life. Um, and I was still very much a sort of binge drinker and partier. Um, not necessarily drinking every day, but, um, you know, when I did, then it wasn't, I wasn't always too sure, indeed, nobody else was really, where I might end up. Um, and um, that was all very good, you know, it's all good fun, you know, I had great fun. Um, but, you know, there came a time when I actually didn't really want to be doing it, and yet I still was doing it. And I tried various different ways of trying to stop, whether it be move from where I lived or not see the people that I was seeing or whatever it may have been. Um, and none of those really worked. Um, and so, you know, it, it sort of continued. And then I got to a stage where really there was quite a sort of a, what they call a rock bottom in various different areas of my life, which, you know, I'm sure, um, you know, people who've had the same challenges um, will relate to. Um, and then and there comes a time when, you know, there's just really kind of, you, you've either got to um, make a, be honest in as much as it is not the way you want to live your life. And then you've got to have um, the next step is being willing to do something about it and there can be quite a gap um, between the two as there was in my case and I, I think probably many other people's um, but anyway it um, you know I, I went uh, you know I I had a, a number of friends of mine who um, you know had alcohol or drug problems um, you know for a number of years and they'd address that and they're, they're still clean and sober um, and so you know I was sort of I had the friends and the contacts out there um, you know if I wanted to reach out for help and um, but actually you know um, it wasn't necessarily just through them but it was you know it was good to to know that you know, I, I did know people who had been in a similar situation and, and, and decided to address it. So, you know, I eventually entered into a, what they call a 12 step program, not through um, residential rehab. Um, and, um, you know, did it by going to, you know, regular meetings um, and, doing all the things that were suggested um nothing you know and the clever thing is that these were things that were all suggested rather than told what to do because i'm one of these people and i'm sure some people can probably relate to this too that if you tell me what to do i really don't want to do it no you dig your heels in <laughs> so, so the idea of a suggested program of recovery um kind of I got that um, and really I just, you know, life was at such a point that I didn't really have many options in as much as if I was going to start to live a fruitful and fulfilled life. There weren't a lot of options other than to deal with, you know, my um, um, alcohol and, and, and substance misuse. Um, so you know, that's really kind of how I did it. And I'm a great believer, you know, again, and I don't want to bore everybody with this, but I'm a great believer that, you know, there comes a time um, where, you know, I, I, I was basically, people had tried to um, help me, push me, pull me, whatever way you, you whatever way you, um, whatever way you want to describe it, you know, years earlier, but, you know, I, it just wasn't the time. So there, there comes a time where the penny drops and, well, certainly for me, and it all comes together and you think, no, this is, you know, I'm going to take this seriously. Yeah. So it requires, you know, it requires a change in, in one's 
I, I think you have to, you know, in, to engage with it fully, you have to make some pretty immediate changes, you know. Um, and, you know, but it is, as they say, um, yeah, a bridge to normal living. So it's not a question of suddenly by not drinking or, or getting sober that you suddenly are excluding yourself from normal life. In fact, the reality is that you're opening yourself up to normal life. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm just very fortunate um, and grateful that, you know, I had, you know, the, the, the moment was right for me and I had the support and friends um, along the route and through the 12-step programme, which I'm still, you know, very much in, engaged with. It's, uh, it's not something that, you know, I, um, you know, it's not, a, 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 if you like, an obsession, um, but it is the number one, um, the, you know, the, the, the number one sort of um, principle that I hold in my life, because I know that if, if I don't, and I potentially, you know, relapse, um, then, you know, all bets are off. And I've, I've been very fortunate that, you know, it's been a relatively, um, you know, it hasn't been as hard, nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, but, um, you know, I, I kind of always have to remember and just stay connected to how it was. Um, but also, as they say, you know, acknowledge the problem, but live in the solution. And so I think, hopefully, <laughs> Most of the time, I'm living in a solution, but I think that's I don't want to bore you all with this, um, and um, so I'm happy to to I, leave it there. But I think I would be fair to say that I wouldn't be with Charlie, and I wouldn't have you know we wouldn't have the three lovely children and everything else um, had I been on the trajectory of an earlier life. Put it that way. Yeah, and I just I think I am really really proud of you for the changes you've made. Obviously, I didn't know you pre, um, but I just think, I think 21 years is amazing. And I think, you know, we often say the serenity prayer, um, which, will you just say it, darling? Because I think it's really something I often think mm. about when things are tough. Yeah, well, the serenity prayer is, is very simply, it's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. And it's a very simple little few lines. Um, but sometimes, you know, when one is looking for solutions, when one has problems, you know, sometimes it's good just, I find it quite good just to run through that. Just say that I'm, you know, I know what I can do, what I can't do. Um, and really it's, you know, just about putting your best foot forward. Um, you know, a, a day at a time, really. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes, you know, if things are really challenging, and again, I'm sure we've all been through those times, you know, one might be saying that, or thinking that through one's mind an hour at a time, yeah. um, or, in, or a tea less. But, <laughs> but it's, a, uh, it's a very good mantra, yeah. um, you know, amongst, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, amongst many others, which are sort of are, you know, again, you know, encompassed in in the twelve step program of um, of recovery, and there are there are other programs of recovery, and and um, you know I I'm sure you know um, equally as effective. But I have to say that for long term sobriety, from the people I know, I know a lot of people who've stopped drinking or whatever, um, but the ones generally who stayed stopped have been involved in a mm. continual program of recovery and a um, engagement with the 12-step program and all that that encompasses. Yeah. Yeah, encompasses yeah. Yeah. Thank you, darling, for chatting. Because I think I'm always saying, um, you know, in sharing, you help other people and other people can resonate and it may not be relevant for you to hear today, but you might know somebody. And, and I just, I think 
sharing helps other people. And I just thought, you know, as, as it's 21 years, that, that it's something that we haven't mm -hmm. talked about together um, here. And thank you, darling. For, yes, for and 21 years definitely does not mean one knows it all by a long way. Um, you know, and again, the, you know, I can talk to somebody who may have only been sober for three or four days. And, you know, they think that I'm there helping them. And of course, you know, I hope that I am, but actually they're helping me massively too. And I will hear, you know, people who've just been around for a few days, have just got sober, and it'll take me right back to where I was. And it, that's really good to hear. And they'll come out with pearls of wisdom and, and say something, you know, that I won't have heard before, which will be meaningful and which I will, um, um, you know, uh, identify with. Um, as indeed, hopefully, you know, them talking to me, they will, they will also get an identification from what, um, from my experience. And at the end of the day, it's all about experience, really. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. you can't, you know, I'm a great believer in you can't tell people what to do, but you can share your experience with them and then they can decide whether they identify that with that and whether, yes, actually, light bulb moment, um, hey, um, you might be onto something here, or no, that's not for me. Yeah. Thank you, darling. Hey. I love you. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Gussie and I are in the car. We've also got Tess. She's um she's on Gus's lap. She wants to come too. She loves an outing in the car. We are heading off to South Morton Market. A trip down to Devon wouldn't be right without uh, popping to South Morton Market. So we're going to go and do that. Everybody is staying behind apart from Gus. He's keeping me company. Now, we need to tell you about last night. Somebody that follows me on Instagram knew that we were coming down to Devon and she said, Charlie, do you know about the Grove at King's Nympton? And I said, no, I haven't heard of it. Wow, it is the most incredible pub. So good, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a proper old fashioned pub with seriously good food. It's run by Richard and his wife, Deborah. They've, I think they've run it for tw over 20 years, might be 21 years, which, um, which is incredible. And the atmosphere is lovely. It's like still a local pub, but with seriously good food. And obviously there were a few holiday makers in there <laughs> like us and a, and a couple of other families, but it was just delicious. I mean, it's seriously Yummy, yummy, yummy. We're not into sort of going to Michelin style restaurants and things like that. We just like good, proper sort of non-fussy food. It was very seasonal. There was wild garlic on the menu as well. And it was, it was a really fun, jolly evening. So we did that and yes, you guys all had a little bit of a lion. So they've been surfing in the morning every day. So this morning was a bit of a lion. We're heading to South Moulton and then coming back and then off surfing. I think it might be the last surf, although there is talk of squeezing in a very early session tomorrow, but we will see. Anyway, let's go to South Moulton. I love a proper market, old fashioned market. You cannot beat it. So I shall um, show you around as much as I can. Quiet. Some friends. A little bit closer for comfort than I would have liked. I've come up to my special spot up here, which is where Mum's ashes are scattered, and I always love to come up here and just take a moment um, and remember and reflect and just yeah, be up here. I feel like I'm really close to her when I'm here. Anyhow, Gus and I had a lovely trip to South Moulton Market. The market was bustling, it was busy, which is so good to see. 
I know sort of Easter weekend it's going to be busier than other times of the year but it's really important that these markets are supported to keep them going. We also popped in to see Jill, Source of the Goose, which is one of my favourite shops down here. So that was lovely to, to see her. Oh, they're on the move. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog and seeing a little bit of our holiday with us. Very honest conversation with Sai, but um, I'm just so proud of him. He's, he's amazing. And um, yes, hopefully him chatting about what he's been through will help other people. Anyway, I'm sending lots and lots of love. Have a wonderful Easter and I will be back again next week with another how-to and a vlog. And in the meantime, just sending lots and lots of love. Tries to carry all the whispers that it finds The walls are listening when we talk Making echoes as we walk